Hello and welcome. My name's Leanne. I live in Australia and this is my crafty cupboard. Welcome back to Botanical Beauties in Botanical Beauties. Susanna and Corinne take turns to give us one flower a month and we create that flower. So this is my pansy that I created last week. If you didn't see how to make that, you can watch my video. Um, it's in the playlist at the end of this video. And this is an extra video to show you how I turn this little embroidered piece into a completed quilt as you go hexagon ready for stitching together. So this is how I use up my little pieces. So that um, they don't go to waste and it's a lovely way to experiment and play. So now I'm just cutting out the hexagon. Now the size I'm working with is one and a quarter inch so from here to here this side is one and a quarter inch and then you'll need another hexagon that's half an inch bigger so I use the one and a half of the quarter inch seam allowance so that's one and three quarter inches for the um, colored part because it has to fold over once, twice to meet. Talking about my hexagon kit, why don't we take a look at how I put it together? So when I have finished a project and I've got small pieces of fabric left, I iron them, press them beautifully flat. I use a little bit of spray starch to help with that process. Then using my one and three quarter inch hexagon, it's time to cut the little hexagons out. I try and get as many hexagons as I can on each scrap. When it comes to the center of my hexagons, I use plain fabrics and I treat these a little differently. So I draw as many one and a quarter inch hexagons as I can fit on the fabric. And that way I've got something more substantial to hang on to for doing my embroidery. If we cut them all up straight away, it's a little bit more fiddly. With the wadding, we need a one and a quarter inch hexagon on that as well. And I simply use the offcuts from quilting projects because we always end up with a strip of wadding that we cut off in the quilting process. Now these small off cuts of wadding don't go to waste. I simply pull them apart and fluff them up to use them as stuffing inside other projects. These pieces don't need to go to waste either. The smaller triangular parts of them I use with the mini octagons and hexagons. You can make little flowers like this. This uses the octagon shape. To store my fabrics, I simply clip them in between two larger hexagon shapes cut from cardboard. 
and clip them together with sewing clips. These are handy to have in their kit as well so that um, I can hold the sides of my hexagons as I stitch. So inside my kit I've got a pencil and um, disappearing pen, my rotary cutter, the little templates that I showed you before. I've got a little bobbin of bottom line thread that I use for sewing the hexagons together. I like it because it's very nice and thin. In this container which used to house glue, I keep three needles. So I have a larger chenille needle for uh, embroidering ribbons and then I have a normal embroidery needle and then a tiny quilting needle um, to sew the hexagons together. I like using the fine quilting needle and that thin bottom line thread. This is an ort, so just a little bag of embroidery offcuts that can be used to embroider the centres in go my lovely pieces of fabric and the templates. the art of embroidery threads, even little finished pieces can fit for now. And let's not forget the hexagons on which we can embroider. Fold that up and pop that in there too. And some pre-cut hexagons of wadding, clipping those in between some hexagons cut from cardboard. Now of course you don't have to have all the fancy plastic templates to do this either, you can actually just draw and cut hexagons out of cardboard to be your templates. And I have a little pair of travel scissors tied on near the tassel so that I can cut any threads. One ready to go mini hexagon kit with everything I need to create inside it. You know, when I have enough one day, <laughs> then I'll sit and stitch them all together. But in the meantime, it's just a fun little complete finished piece. And it's a nice way for trying out your skills and um, practicing things and just relaxing. Let's keep cutting this out. You need a piece of wadding the same size. Be nice to get sort of a movie. Ooh, that could work. I've got this pinky mauve one. I think let's go with this one. I think this piece of fabric came to me from Christine, Create and Craft with Christine, who sent me the most beautiful gift of little bits and pieces for slow stitch. Thank you, Christine. I still get so much joy and use from all of the lovely things in that gift. This simply goes in the center. And then we're going to fold it once and then fold it over again. Now these are small enough that you can actually just hold them in your hand. The only trouble is it'll often shift there on the felt, on the backing wadding. What I tend to do is
do one side and pin it Okay, so now that's sort of secure. And then I work from this side, the opposite side. See how that shifted again? So you just want to make sure you take that time to line up your fabric on your wadding. ready to go. So I use a very fine needle for this. I think this is a 12. Come up from under the wadding but not the backing fabric and go right to the edge. And as I mentioned I use bottom line thread because I find that that disappears the best. So I'm taking a little stitch in the wadding and the pictured fabric and coming up just along the edge go right down below it take a little bite come up on the edge this is very lovely thing to do very meditative Take your time. one side stitch down and you can't see the stitches here again we're just going to I'm just really pressing it firmly with my finger and thumb turn it once and turn it again so you're actually just lining up this edge with that edge
when you get to the corners also you do you want to make sure that they um, you know the corner lines up with the edge just to keep it a nice neat appearance Okay, to finish off, I go in the edge where I started and come out about halfway along here. Put my needle under and just take a little stitch, just to anchor it in the underneath section. Wrap the thread around three times, hold it. This will form a knot and then lose that knot by just putting the needle through underneath and pulling. So now there's nothing visible from the front. So there we have it. Very sweet fabric on this side. And an adorable pansy on this side. I can join my collection of other botanical beauties. Some of them sort of taken from nature, like the hydrangea and the cherry blossom, albeit a stylized one, and the lavender. roses some of them just created an octagon flower button flowers and a i don't know a mandala sort of snowflake type thing there you go so um i was really pleased when Rin and Susanna launched this challenge uh, because it gives me a little way to to create and got me back into thinking about my little container of mini hexagons and that's a lovely way of using up my scraps and uh, of course the other side looks gorgeous as well because um, you've got all these beautiful fabric scraps to enjoy. Now I have made earlier videos about um, these little hexagons so I'll link them in the playlist which you can see at the end of this video it'll be in one of the cards here thanks very much for watching everyone it's lovely to have you along thanks for all your lovely comments and um, big thank you to my subscribers i'll see you next time